Hello. Let's start with the simple physical wheel slash build. There was some changes in season 3 to the physical builds, but it's not a direct buff to wheel slash itself. So let's get into it. Let's start with the wheel slash. However, well, remember that you don't need 6 links to finish the axe. 4 to 5 links on wheel slash is more than enough. There are three main link runes that you can buy in the acts, and they're gonna be good till the end game. So that is Dot, Savagery, and Iron Nil. Keep those at max level and use colored essences on them. Confidence, additional physical damage, is not necessary to color them, but you can give them some levels if you have extra growth material. Winding Wind, there is a as utility as it gives you movement speed stacks. It's up to you. If you need more attack speed, you can use Quick Attack instead. And if you want to use Winding Wind and Quick Attack at the same time, you can pick up Acceleration Rune, which is gonna give you attack speed and movement speed. However, it's a blue scent. Then let's go to the another rune that gives you damage, that is Illusion Axe. Even though Illusion Axe has a low range, however, you're playing Wheel Slash, so most of the times you're gonna stay close to the NPCs. You link your Illusion Axe with Convert Fire Damage and with Extract Energy. Extract energy basically gives you, in this case, gives you fire energies because we have convert to fire. And every single stack of fire energies is 30% damage multiplier. You can have 5 stacks. Then let's go to the buffs. So offensive buff is a fighter's right. It works really well with, with will slash. Defense buff is siphon life. You can link both two of those with increased duration and time acceleration. Then let's go into some utilities. Shadow Provocation is a good damage increase and arm amplification buff that you can link with Hajat Shout and Lingering Shout. And if you use buff activation when hit, it's gonna proc automatically every single time you get hit. Same goes with for Shout of Justice, which removes crowd control from you if you're using buff activation upon crowd control. So you wouldn't need to press it yourself. Movement abilities is Leap Attack and Roll. Both of those can be linked with Use Count and Disarm. It's up to you if you want to have one movement ability or two. And let's get to the seals. So Enduring Pain is a defensive seal in this case, gives armor per stack. And offensive seal is Seal of Condensed Destruction. However, this seal is actually a, a blue scent. However, if you can get a seal of pain, which is a yellow scent, is gonna be a little bit more damaged later into the game. Enhanced effect is a guild raid rune. However, with the introduced guild raids, it should be really easy to get it even in the early game. So you can link it on your shadow provocation and fighters right. Dampen resource cost is just to manage, manage your mana. You can link it onto illusion axe and onto both of your seals, enduring pain and seal of condensed restrictions. Early on charms you can't be picky, but I would suggest to focus on Hamal, Boreal and Aquila. I would suggest to pick up Hamal first for HP amp and physical damage amplification. However, early you won't be able to get a bonus from the blessing effect. As blessing depends on what tier charm you have, the higher tier charm, the more blessing you get. So early what happens, I would say use any charm you have that has either damage, dot, or damage when two-hander, or any HP rolls. HP rolls is not a bad idea early, or elemental resistances, or chaos resistance, and don't check at the authority, because you can fix your charms later when you actually finish the acts. In the, after finishing act 10, you're gonna get a chaos star. And if you're gonna craft your Chaos Star, craft it with only one type of charms. I would suggest Hamal, Hamal, Hamal charms. In this case, you might be able to get 140. If you are aiming for a Blessing 140, use any charms, even if those charms doesn't have a good affix for you to get benefit from. Because the 140 percent blessing 
the 15% phys physical damage amplification in this case is going to be better than any charms you can get early into the game. So go with Hamal, Boreal and Aquila leave for the last. For the wheel slash you want a two-handed weapon. In this case you want a two-handed sword with a implicit weapon range with a lowest critical rate on the weapon and with the highest attack damage. Priority wise, you want to roll weapon attack damage multiplier, then physical damage flat, then physical damage multiplier, and depending on what you need. If you want more clear, you can try to roll weapon range, or if you need more attack speed, you can try to roll weapon speed instead. For the resistance part, you can either pick up some chaos res or some elemental or any of the stats that you need the most. It's de depending on you. <clears throat> on the neck, you want a physical damage multiplier implicit on the neck. Then HP flat, physical damage multiplier, physical damage flat. And depending on what resistances you want or need on the suffix part. I would say physical damage flat is, is going to be more damage early than a physical damage multiplier. Then the boots. Boots are easy. What you want is movement speed increase, and then whatever you can get. Um, Armor multiplier is a good choice, HP is a good choice, on the suffix part again. Any of the resistances that you need, and then whatever else you can get, HP region for example. On the chest part, I would highly suggest to pick up armor multiplier, because on the high tier armors, on the high tier equipment, Armor multiplier is going to be a better choice than a flat. HPs, any flat or multiplier, resistance wise is what you need on the suffix part. Maybe even HP reg regen if you need it. On the ring part, you want a physical damage flat on it. And then attack speed. Highly recommend attack speed. Then physical damage multiplier, and then whatever you need the most, either HPs or some resistances or some stats. Most of the zodiacs are actually default choices. So let's start with Afros. Pick up some HP, some attack speed. Then let's go to Explorer. Pick up some armor and some damage. Into Gem. For some attack speed and HP. Then choose Leaf. Pick up some armor, some regen, and some damage. Then your first specialization is gonna open. Let's go for the hammer. We can only use seven points early, because two extra points comes from the quests that are in the Saluto area. And here you have a choice. You can pick up uplift for some extra attack speed if you need it or go into dot amplification for much more damage together with overpower after that we go to contrast pick up some elemental resistances and damage then we can go to prela pick up the resistance that you need the most then some armor and of course some damage after that we go to three you only need to use six points in here after those six points your spec 2 is gonna open we're gonna go for front in here you want to pick up damage amplification together with acceleration for some movement speed and attack speed and then into dot amplification you could opt for the dot amplification against bosses but it's not good for mapping as you only need to kill one boss at the end so, in general, universal damage amplification is going to be better. After that, you want to go back to 3. Add those two extra points in here for dot acceleration. After that, the mirror to pick up some attack speed. Then into air to pick up some chaos resist and some damage multipliers. After that to Plague, use 3 points in Plague, for
awesome damage. Then three points into the blacksmith for physical damage dampening and HP amplification which do with dodge disabled as we don't have any dodge in this build. Then we have to pick up a spec 3 that is flame. In this spec you can use 9 points so go for dodge amplification against bosses for HP absorb on hit which is the main one and priority to pick up to have some leech and then into enrage for some buffs. After that, you can go back to Plague, but it's most likely you're gonna be done with the, with the acts. But if you are not, go back to Plague, pick up some armor, some damage, movement speed plus damage when two-handed. Then you can go into the Farmer for some HP amp if you need. But those are basically optional. Or you can pick up Hunter and go for some reset skill rune cooldown. It's good if you have Shout of Provocation at this point because it can reset Shout of Provocation cooldown. Damage wise is not much but Shout of Provocation reset is really good. And then if you have those points and you are high level you can do something interesting, go into the float and pick up some damage. A lot of damage with some, some other things that actually doesn't work for you. But it's the best one if you need a lot more damage. And that would be it. All extra points, it's up to you. Whatever you find, whatever you need to, mo to use at that moment. Yeah, just remember that... To, you, to unlock specializations and use your specializations as soon as you can. Because that's where all the damage you can get. So, yeah, that would be it. This is what you should aim for while doing acts. And basically this is closer to the end game build. If you are only doing physical wheel slash. So, you want to pick up damage acceleration, grip strength and melee damage amplification onto your wheel slash. Damage Acceleration is a yellow synth, but I would say this is the most important one as it increases your damage the most. It's not like it increases your damage, but it makes your dot tick faster. That means you do more damage in a second. But overall damage doesn't change. Then you want to go for the Seal of Pain, which is again a yellow synth. But it gives you dot amplification and at this stage of the game, amp is gonna be always better than a multiplier. Then you want to pick up penetrating slash as your movement ability together with disarm and use count. And use buff activation upon using movement skill. And link it to your shout of provocation and pen, pen slash. That way, every single time you use pen slash, you're gonna proc your shout of provocation. On shout of provocation, you can use improved shout. It's gonna give you a little bit more damage. Not too much, but there is no better choice, no better ones to use, unless you have something like, uh, and you need like, Shadow Pama for the uplift effect, or Quick Shout for a faster, faster cast. It's up to you, whatever you, can, whatever you have. After that, for the Fighter's Rot. You want to use Totem Activation upon using Enhanced Skill and link it to Weekend Totem that increases damage taken on the enemy that is debuffed. This is easy to use as you don't need to use your Totem actively because you're using a Trigger Rune. In this case you could actually pick up some Rapid Seals but I'm not suggesting to pick up a Rapid Seal as it requires extra spots on your, on your skill bar. While Totem is not gonna require any any extra bar, and you will always gonna trigger it while using Fighter's Rod. After that, you can pick up some Seal. There are plenty of choices for the Seal. This one is for the Elemental Damage Taken Dampening, but you can pick up Physical One, you can pick up some Chaos Res, whatever you need the most at this stage of the game. And that would be it.
There are three unique items that are really good on the wheel slash. First would be a two-handed sword called Piercing Eye Burly Assassin TF82. The reason that it's really good is because it has an insane amount of equipped weapon range. It has 150 on the tooltip plus 150 from the stacks. Basically with this, your wheel slash becomes as big as your screen, so map layering with this is really good. A lot of people run this even in high level maps. As Building damage on a wheel slash is not that hard, and they switch to a crafted weapon when they doing a single target content. That would be like the sun raids or gold raids. Another one is a chest called Concentrated Bone. It's really good for quite some time, as it gives you elemental resistances, chaos resistances, but but moreover, it gives you a damage taking dampening buff that it stacks ten times. So. In overall, you get 20% damage shaken dampening. And it's basically the best defensive you can get early without crafting dual authority chests. Another one would be Hilt of Life and Death. This one basically works for every single build, but it's one of the best defensive builds that you can get. In Season 3 patch notes, there was no changes to the wheel slash. However, there are three things to consider right now. First would be a new physical skill rune called Thorn Explosion. It has a decent tooltip and it could work as a trigger rune. Second would be a lower armor link rune. It's hard to say if it's gonna be good because we don't know the values of the armor that NPC has. So the actual damage increase from that is impossible to say right now. However, if it's possible to link it on Illusion Axe, it might be good because the comparison would be against shock effect or fire energies. And the last one is basically a buff to every single physical skill as the armor of the NPCs was lowered. However, the value is unknown. So this would be basically the main changes to the wheel slash in season three. So have fun grinding and see you next time.